23 of my crafting podcast. This is my fortnightly vlog about knitting, crochet, weaving, spinning, dyeing, embroidery, anything else that seems like a good idea at the time. I'm an autistic woman living in North Yorkshire in the north of England with my husband, our three daughters um, and three cats. Um, you can find me on social media. On Instagram, I'm Mel Brown Crafting Podcast and also Creative Escape Retreats, which is my teaching business, um, craft teaching. And I am on Ravelry as Funky 40. We also have a Ravelry group for this podcast <clears throat> and that's where the show notes are held. So if you, I say anything today that you're interested in, click on the link below this video and that will take you across to Ravelry and there'll be clickable links to everything that I've talked about. Right. Okay. Hello. I've got some finished objects for you today. Um, quite exciting, actually. But not a lot else, so let's dive in. Um, let's look at where are they now? What's happened to the projects that you've already seen? Now, memories and tentacle are still snoozing. Um, I did take tentacle out with me this week, um, largely because the, my take out with me project is finished. Um, and when I got there I realised that I was at a place where I needed to check the pattern and I didn't have the pattern with me because it was on my iPad. So I haven't actually done any more of that but that's quite possibly going to become my take out with me pa uh, project. So. And memories, yeah, not touch that. So that's uh, Whips Works in Progress 1 and 2. Lula, um, I finished it. I was just plonking away at it as I always do just it's a really zen project it's just kind of you know I know what I'm doing with it it's really relaxing and um, I looked at what was left of the yarn and I thought oh my goodness um, I'm running a bit short here so I weighed it and then I did another full repeat of the of the six rows of the pattern and then I weighed it again and realized that I only had after that another two full repeats of yarn left and as you know, those of you who've watched before, once I could smell the end of a project, I just can't leave it alone. So I just carried on with it and I stayed up a tiny bit later than I normally do when I have a very strict bedtime routine. As an autistic woman, I have a very strict bedtime routine. And I stayed up maybe five minutes later than usual, which is quite a, a thing for me, but I need to finish it. And this is all I had left over. Um, so let's have a look at the, um, the yarn. The yarn was gorgeous i bought it at yarndale a year ago so that's quite appropriate isn't it i've just got just been to yarndale again so there it is and it was two skeins uh gradient skeins tied together um and there it is absolutely gorgeous yarn and um yeah it's done let me show it to you so it's a fade from the white through to the dark blue so it's quite subtle um, and there's the, the pattern to the leaf motif now the designer says it could probably benefit from a bit of light blocking um, but as you can see I mean the pattern is already really really clear I don't know and it's fairly long already they say don't they that the scarf should be about the, the length of your height you see what I mean? And just see how this relates to my height. It's not actually for me, but my mum in law is about the same height as me. Oh, that's, that's not bad. It's about the same height as me. So that's probably quite appropriate. As it is. But that doesn't mean that you can, it couldn't be blocked kind of outwards a little bit to just kind of open up the lace a little bit. I don't know. So. It's cool. It's a lovely pattern. I, it was a long pattern because it's like two 400 meter skeins, um, kind of tied together. I was just trying to find the um, thingy bob to see the exact yardage. Yeah, not quite. 730 meters for the whole thing. So it was a long, long project, but it was really lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend it. Um, so the six rows pattern, um, I can't show the pattern with you because it's a paid for, but I managed to get the, um, the crux of it written down on these and I would just, as I finished that one, just move on to the next one and put the thing in. So I always knew what, um, row I was on, 
and uh, just a few little key reminders because it was a really easy to memorize pattern. Um, so it was very easy to pick up and do and take out. Um, and yeah, just really zen because it's so relaxing. I just really liked picking it up. So I would definitely recommend it. It's a lovely pattern. Um, and one of the great things about it was it's a long um, project, but at the end of it, there were four ends to sew in. And if you'd done a, a 200 gram cake, then there wouldn't even, there'd only be two. Um, there was only four because it was two cakes, uh, two skeins tied together. So at the tie, obviously I just uh, um, did uh, run those, under the knot and ran those ends in. And that's all I have left. So that's not gonna be enough to put a square on my blanket. So I'm thinking that'll probably end up in a weaving project. Um, yeah, I should think. So, it's done. Um, I might, if I do, if I'll take it to the blocking queen and see what she thinks. If she decides to block it, then I'll show it to you again afterwards. But otherwise, <laughs> I won't. I won't show it to you again. So there we go. I think that's probably how I'd wear it. But I don't know how Mum and Noel will choose to wear it because it's her Christmas present. So I'll get that blocked. Okay. Excellent. Next work in progress that you've already seen is the girlfriend cow. I was very close to finishing that when I saw you last, spoke to you last, and I have finished it. So Andrea and I, we were the girlfriends that were making it. We got together here in the den and we cast it off together. And I've got a picture here of us together with our completed cows. So there we go, it's all done. It's it's lovely. Um, <laughs> I'd said on the podcast that um, last time that Andrea was finishing, she was just going to, uh, she'd stopped knitting and was just going to leave it quite short but then she was watching the last podcast um on the screen in her room and um just picked it up to carry on a little bit while she was watching and ended up <laughs> knitting right to the end of the yarn so we have the same length of cows so there it is it sits really nice it goes beautifully with my hair um it's 100 percent silk so i've shown you all the details of that last time and i don't know actually where they are now can't remember what bag I had in. Anyway, I've shown you the details before. It was um, uh, 100% silk that I bought from a lady who I saw at a store in St Albans. Um, she does have an online shop, Willow Knits, that's it. Um, and she does solids and as well as the um, variegated ones. Lots of different colours and they're really lovely. So very, very happy with that. I can see my myself snuggling under, having that snuggled under a coat. Um, yeah, really happy. Okay, uh, the mystery knit along. Okay, so it's unlikely that you're doing the mystery knit along and you're further behind than me because I am behind. But just in case you are, spoiler alert, I'm going to show you the mystery knit along. So this, for those of you who aren't totally obsessed with this particular project, is a Stephen West um, mystery knit along Starflake. Um, and let me think, we're on the third clue right now, and in three days time we're going to get the fourth clue <laughs> behind. So the first clue was two sections, and it was um, it was really starting to get long rows, you know what Stephen West projects are like, I don't know if you've done one before, but long rows is his thing. So, um, and then the clue two was brioche, and there was a garter stitch um, option, but I I'm not confident with brioche. Um, I would, sorry, my hair's a real mess. I would like to teach it at some point. So I want to get more confident with it. And I love it. I love the way it looks, the way it feels. So I really wanted to do it. But uh, the first few rows, oh, it was awful. There's increases and decreases. Um, and I did got halfway through one row and I, I was, had to really concentrate on it at that point. And I realised that I'd done the increases where I should be decreasing and vice versa. So I had to tink it back, and for those of you who don't knew, know the phrase, tink is to go back one stitch at a time and unknit it. Um, and it's not particularly uh, an enjoyable thing to do. I mean, brioche itself isn't too much of a problem, but the complicated decreases. Um, with brioche, you have to do, if you're increasing or decreasing, you have to do increase two stitches because you need to keep the same even number. Um, so they're double decreases and they're quite complex um, uh, 
so undoing those was no fun and I just at the end of that I had a real pity party and I was like oh, I'm never going to get this done I'm not going to get it the brioche section finished until the whole cow's over and um, had a moan to my friends on Instagram and then um, and then I just well one of my American friends would have said put my big girl panties on and um, just cracked on with it and the last weekend I broke the back of it really um, I uh, did pretty much all of the brioche in two days um, which isn't a great thing I mean it's it was 24 rows and of course they're double rows because you have to knit and then you have to knit a uh, pearl with the other yarn so it's 48 rows and looking at around up to about 300 250 300 stitches on each row so it wasn't a small feat um, but particularly as I'm not that confident with brioche but I am now <laughs> that was what I wanted to achieve that at the end of it I'm confident with brioche so it's achieved that so um but i didn't finish that in time for the next clue but that's okay so all this wittering i'm going to bloom and show you so um i had my two colors which are giddy aunt yarns um and they um i've actually got the other two down here sorry so this is the the yarn um i've got two of this teal and two of this dark really dark blue um and i wanted i don't know i mentioned last time i wanted to put a flash of some other color in just for fun and i did i went ahead and did it so let's have a look here it is so here's the here's clue clue one section one then section two with the long rows and then i put in this flash of pink now this is um will is the answer um a little uh, mini that my friend bought me so I put that flash of pink in and then we start the brioche and yeah it feels amazing and it looks amazing and I'm really glad I did it obviously didn't get a flash of the pink in there um, might do on the next clue um, and then the third clue came out and I actually got started on that last night um, so that's this so it's just out on the edge here we're doing a little short row section and just like the um, the section down here we've got the garter stitch in the teal and stocking stitch in the navy blue so um, this clue has actually got three sections to it <laughs> and uh yeah i'm gonna get behind again but that's okay so i'm on with the first section over here the second section i think is the same over here and then the third section is probably something filling in between don't know haven't I, i'm really doing it totally as a mystery so I, I don't look at anything until i get to start it so so yeah i'm i'm loving it it's clearly going to be quite a, an artwork by the end of it um it's fab um i'll get another a splosh of the, the pink in later on the main problem i'm having at the moment i'm annoyed is is my ball winding and i've actually asked on a, a facebook page called everyday knitters about this recently that when i wind a skein into a ball i've got just the standard knit pro ball winder and um it slips so i'm just winding quite happily and then suddenly i'll realize that the tension in my winding is gone and what's happened is the yarn has slipped down off of the cake onto the shaft of the winder and then it'll pick up again and I can carry on round but the problem is those slips um, they cause huge issues for me so let's have a look at the balls I've got here um, this is my ball and I've got a um, actually that's up this one's fine this one was starting to go and it went terrible so I started to get these loops come out and they they come out with from the center with this and then they get tangled around it so every few pulls i have to just untangle it and then i'll get a really a bit where i can't pull it it's really really tight and i have to go inside and i have to um, find out what it's tied around and pull it off and then uh day before yesterday i gave it a pull and this great big yarn prolapse came out and it was this horrible knotty mass and uh luckily i managed to um, finish the section I was on and then hubby untied it for me but then of course I cut it off but then of course this ball was wound here that was the but the outside of it because we ran it from this end the outside of it was this bit 
connected to the ball and the, the end that I needed to knit with was the inside. And this happens to me every time I wind a ball. If I want to get 100 grams into one cake, I always get these problems and they can, be, they can really slow down my knitting and really make it unhappy for me, which is obviously not desirable. So I posted on Never Did Knitter saying, you know, can you, somebody recommend a good ball winder? And half of the people recommended the ball winder that I have or a model that's very similar. Um, and then, or probably more than half actually, and then, um, so I said, well, maybe it's my technique then. And then somebody showed me a video of them doing it. It's exactly what I do. Exactly. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's really, you know, it's my birthday coming up and I'm very happy to buy myself a birthday present of a new ball winder. But I just can't seem to find one that will actually do the job. Have you got any ideas? Anybody got a good ball winder? I don't mind spending a bit of money. It's my 50th birthday. I can you know, justify spending a bit of money. But I just want something that's going to wind a nice cake that will stay nice and I can send to pull it and not be distracted. Anyway, wine, wine, wine. So that is the mystery knit along. Um, it's Wednesday today. So the next clue comes out on Friday. Um, I won't be here on Friday. Um, so I, I think I'm going to get behind, but I might not because of what's happening then this week. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with that. I'm trying to avoid spoilers on Instagram, but I'm fortunate in that he has set quite a, a tough schedule for us. There is an awful lot of knitting to do each week. So there's not many people who are just kind of, you know, sometimes you do one and two days after the clue has been released, there's a picture of the, the finished thing and you think, oh my goodness. But um, it's quite a slow burn. Uh, because you know there's an awful lot of knitting to do in a week so i'm not being um having spoilers oh i'm sorry i can't seem to stop yawning right now i should make myself coffee shouldn't i right rick socks this is a cookie a pattern where are they i'm afraid they're in disgrace at the moment so i'll just show you where i'm at this is yarn that i dyed myself and you can see it's pooling really interestingly so I've done the cuff and I've started on the pattern of the leg and two things have happened. First of all, there's a yarn over at the end of each round. Now that doesn't seem like an awful lot of, you know, it's not a big problem, but it's, it's not fun because I tend to stop, you know, I've got, I've got two circulars. So this is the, the, the back half and this is the front half of the sock. And I tend to stop at the end of a round when I can, but you can't have a yarn over sat at the end of a round because when you pick your yarn up again and straighten it, it comes off. So you have to actively remember when you pick up the yarn, pick up the knitting, that there's a yarn over to add in. And things that you have to remember in order to get it right and not exactly my forte right now. I need to be able to pick it up and get straight on with it. Um, so I wouldn't say that's a deal breaker on its own, but it's frustrating. I might... Um, consider then putting a marker in to say where the beginning of round is but not have it actually on the end of a, a needle which would be a bit annoying but I could do it but then something else happened I realized I'd made a mistake and I thought I haven't got the right number of stitches I'm not in the right place eek where have I gone wrong I couldn't work out where I'd gone wrong and then I just put it down I thought right that's it and I was thinking this pattern isn't for me I'm gonna rip it out and then I calmed down and I looked at it again I thought and sake, woman, calm your titty winkles, as my daughter would say. Um, so what I'm going to do is this week, I'm going to just have another look at it and take it back a row, tink it back, see where I've gone wrong and see if I can make it work with the yarn over. And if I can't, if I don't like it as it is, I'll change the start of round to being here um, so that the yarn over sits on a needle and see how that goes. But I'm, I'm interested in the way it's pooling. Um, I'm not a big fan of random, um, so that's quite nice. But of course, as the, um, this is the cuff, it's all one pattern. Um, it's uh, a rib, but once I get onto the pattern, that will change the way the, the pooling works. So we'll see how that goes. And I just hope it isn't so busy, the colour isn't so busy that it will just detract from the pattern. Um, but we'll see. Okay, here's my little stitch marker. Which is marking this is the this is the front of the socks this is where the round starts it's a little gingerbread man um, 
cute, isn't it? I got that from, um, oh goodness, Suzanne from, she gave me that skein. I'll put it up here. Anyway, it's cute. So that's Rick Socks, and that is actually my fourth work in progress. I've only got four projects on the go at the moment, which is fairly standard, but on the low side of fairly standard for me. So that's what you've already seen. I haven't started any new projects. Whoops, let's make a mess here. Um, I have maybe finished. Do you remember I showed you last week, last time, the mandala embroidery that I did? We did a workshop with um, Amanda at Moulin Gifts at the Old Spring Well pub in Harrogate. So we're doing one every month there now. Um, she did one in October with the mandala embroidery. I'm doing one in November. I was looking up my sheet. I've got seven bookings of eight spaces and it's 17, 19th of November. So it's nearly a month away and I've already only got one space left. So that's really good. Um, so that's uh that's yeah i showed it to you and i i was disappointed because since the workshop i hadn't managed to add any more stitches to it but i now have so here it is so i was part way through these this blanket stitch scenario thing here and i've added on all that i sent a picture of it to amanda yesterday and said do i add more or is is less more you know less is more all that kind of malarkey um, and she said, I'd be tempted to add a little bit. I've just noticed that there seems to be a gap there. Um, hmm, interesting. I wonder if I've got any of that left. Um, and she said she'd be tempted to add something else on and see how it looks. So I think I might do that. I'm not exactly sure. She said something dark, maybe. I don't know where. But I'll think of something. And I'll add something else on. And then I think what I'll do is just, um, I don't know. I don't really want to sacrifice the um, the embroidery hoop. But I, what Amanda normally does is just pull those in, stitch them down and um, display it like that, which is nice. I probably will do that, actually. Um, okay, so that's finished, or is it? don't know. Right, uh, dyeing. I talked last time about microwave dyeing, so I haven't done much of it um, in the past and I wanted to give it a go because I'm going to be doing a workshop on it in two weeks time at the retreat that I'm organising. And so I decided to give it a go and I actually recorded everything I did. So if you have thought about doing microwave dyeing or if you thought about dyeing you've got a microwave but you were not confident about using hot water or whatever um, have a look at the video I'll put a link in the show notes so it's quite a quick um, process I did it all in a, about an hour or so um, and it's very what I would call fast and dirty so it's not well planned and um, executed it's just kind of what should we do let's try this oh okay let's try that now um, and I'm, I dyed four skeins of yarn with, with four different kind of concepts. So I'm going to show those to you now. And I'll show them to you in the order in which I dyed them. Um, and this is the first one. So you can see the theme here, blues. I love my blues. There's also some purples in there. Um, I changed my mind mid-execution of this about what I was doing. And I basically made it up as I went along. So... It's going to be random blues and purples. Um, and it's, it's sock yarn. So that one was really, really quick. All you need is a metal, sorry, a, no, it wouldn't be good. A glass jug, um, a bit of food colouring and an acid. So either vinegar or citric acid or whatever. And then I just had a play, just chucked it in and played with it. Do watch the video if you're interested in uh, having a go at dyeing. It shows just how easy it is to have a go. So that is actually my favourite of the ones that I did. And when I posted it on Instagram the other day, it's it's the, the one that gets the most reactions as well. So that's that one. Um, I haven't thought of colourway names for any of these yet. So if you have any thoughts, yarn number one, colourway name. Okay, yarn number two. I wasn't planning to, but I spontaneously decided to try a dip dye type effect. So I've gone for greens. And you can see, I think, where the... I dipped the bottom in, a um, bit patchy, but then there's the, at the top you've got this real mint colour 
and then it comes down to at the bottom this really deep green so it's a tonal semi-solid whatever you want to call it in greens i think we should do a black adder reference there um when baldrick decides uh to have a go at alchemy and he makes a, a thing called green because it's not gold it's green um and he makes this uh bracelet no a, a brooch of, of purest green so yeah i think this should be um i think i'll call this baldrick okay so number three i had to go at hand painting so uh, just put it on some cling film, some plastic wrap on the table and just added dyes in as I willy nilly as I wanted. Um, actually willy nilly, that's quite a good name isn't it? That's probably just a British phrase I'm sure you American guys don't use willy nilly. Um, there it is. So you can see what I did, I just laid it on the table and just squirted some colours on it. It's really really quick and really really fun. And you see the white patches in between. Uh, if you don't want white patches in between, you need to either just make sure that you uh, spread out the dye further or else you just dye it with a, the colour you want it to uh, be in between first, all over, and then dye it. You can over dye it, of course, but I didn't want to ruin the, the vibrancy of these colours. So there we go. That one is Willy Nilly. Um, and finally, I had a go at, uh, if I can get the word right, speckles. In the video I kept calling it sprinkles. Um, so I had a go at speckles and I used Kool-Aid for that. So that's a sort of a powdered drink that you have in the US. We don't have it here. It's probably considered quite toxic over here. I certainly wouldn't want the kids to drink it. But um, So I did a, a, a generally blue skein. So learning from that one with the background dyeing, I did I background dyed um, in a semi-solid blue and then I put sprinkles in of oh, purple and red so it's a speckle yarn so Linda has suggested so sprinkly for that Linda's obsessed with the fact that I say so quite a lot so there's the red and then there's the purple and the background of blue so that one is so sprinkly so you've got so sprinkly willy-nilly baldrick and what do you think for that one? Mm. Give me a, give me an idea. Okay, so that was the dyeing. Really, really good fun. Really, really quick. Um, and I, I really like those skeins. I am. Um, I'll probably end up giving one or two of them away. Um, but I don't know. Okay. So that's pretty much all of the projects I've been working on. I've got some plans. I'm looking at my calendar up here. Um, it's half term here next week. Um, down south, it's half term this week. Um, and next week, we've got um, at the library, the local library, I'm doing a session on weaving for autistic children and their families. <clears throat> so they come along, and um, I'm going to give them a, a loom. Let me see if I can find. Oh, here they are. So I did some prep yesterday for this um, because it's going to get busy around here. So I've walked up some small looms, that's in brown, that's in cream, that's in dark blue. And this one's in a lovely pink and um, lime green, and a teal, and a blue. So these are quite small looms <clears throat> and I've walked them up ready. Um, so when their families turn up, they can just grab a loom and just weave any way they want. There's no rules to weaving. Um, if you're weaving a scarf or a, something on a rigid heddle loom or whatever, yes, there are plenty of rules. But if you're um, making something with one of these, there's no rules at all. So the warp thread is there, still attached, so they can carry on weaving with that. Or they can pick up another yarn. There'll be plenty of yarn to choose from. Um, and weird and wonderful sort of fluffy yarns and all kinds of things and they can just explore the textures and do what they want really um, so that's going on Monday I'm really quite looking forward to that um, and then yeah it's the retreat in a couple of weeks so where are we up to um, that's more or less all the crafty stuff 
Um, we'll just tell you a little bit about what's going on in my personal life. But if you're here to tear for the crafty stuff, then um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed it, all the usual stuff, click the thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of malarkey. Um, if anything has interested you, make a comment down below or over at the, um, the Ravelry page. Okay, so it's been a very, very difficult two weeks with Annie, my daughter, who's autistic. Um, she has struggled with so many things and <clears throat> she's hardly been into school at all. And my uh, routine, my, my life has just descended into reactive chaos. And <clears throat> if you know much about autism, all autistic people are different, but I am one who loves my routine and I, I ground myself on it. And get, being able to do the same things each day or even just being able to know when I get up in the morning what I'm doing today is really, really important to me. And at the moment, um, Annie's condition is taking all of that away from me and I am really, really struggling. <clears throat> Um, I had a, quite a crisis last week, um, or I had a meltdown of my own, which I don't have very often, but I, I did. And um, things are a bit better. She's been sleeping throughout the day, basically. So sleeping from sort of nine in the morning till five in the evening, and then up all night. And the up all night means that she's keeping everybody else in the household awake because she'll just spontaneously make herself an omelette, um, and or be playing a video on her iPad and walk to the bathroom with a video playing and you know we can all hear um, and having a lot of anxiety issues in the night as well so it's been really 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 difficult um, and I'm going away I'll tell you more about that in a minute but I'm going away for a day um, tomorrow and I don't know how that's going to go and I'm going away for my birthday and I don't know how that's going to go um, because she's becoming very, very dependent on me after having not been dependent on me at all for the last 13 years. So, that's a struggle. Um, tomorrow I am driving down to... My daughter is, my eldest daughter is at university in Warwick. Well, it's Warwick University, but it isn't actually in Warwick. It's in really closer to Coventry. But they're both um, cities in the Midlands, and we're in the north. So I'll drive down, it'll take about three hours. Um, and I'm going to stay overnight at a Premier Inn, which is um, the autistic's favourite uh, hotel because every room looks the same. <laughs> same bedding, the same pillows, the same setup, the same everything, and you just know exactly what to expect when you go to a Premier Inn. Um, so I've actually stayed in that one altogether when we dropped Lizzie off um, in early October. So I will stay there um, and then I'm going to go watch her play volleyball. <clears throat> And then I'll take her out for dinner. We're just going to the on the campus. We're not going anywhere fancy. And then on the Friday, she's got lectures. And then I'm going to hang out in the hotel on my own, which is actually going to be a massive therapy for me to be on my own. Um, and then I'll get kicked out of the hotel. I have to find somewhere to go. And then I'm going to go watch her play rugby. <laughs> I used to play rugby for my university, so it's fantastic to see, to see her playing. Um, and then we'll both uh, share the drive and to drive back up here for the weekend. So we'll be here until late evening on the Friday and then she'll be here all day Saturday and then Sunday she'll be here for lunch. She'll head off um, on the train on Sunday and go back to work. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, it's going to be wonderful to see her, but it's also it's going to be wonderful to be away from the house for a while. The ho house has always been my sanctuary, but right now because of the needs of um the people in the house it's not that anymore um dave's back is still very bad he's going to need an operation we think we go he we think he slipped a disc again i'm um, going to find out in another week and a half um what they want to do about it he's very fortunate in that he has private health insurance through his company which is makes sense because he, he can't really work very well at the moment and if he was waiting for an operation on the nhs it could be months and months and months um, so his company have thankfully paid for private health insurance for him so he will be much quicker and he'll be able to get back to work quicker which is very important for them because he's a salesman so um, <clears throat> so he isn't able to do an awful lot and he's in a lot of pain and I'm having to deal with all of the things that he would normally do and I am very strongly empathic and his pain and his unhappiness is 
rubs off on me. Um, and also Annie is here most of the time um, and she needs me a lot. So being away from the house is going to be a real treat for me. I'm not sure how everybody will cope without me, but we will find out, won't we? Um, <clears throat> so it's retreat in two weeks. So it's the last retreat I'm organising because it doesn't suit my condition. I am found out I'm autistic after the last, after this retreat was organised and um, I couldn't back out of it. And I, it will be fine. I've got some help drafted in, so um, I won't be there in the mornings. Um, I'll be there for the afternoon session and the evening, and then I'll come home and sleep. So um, it'll be a lot easier, but there's an awful lot going on. I'm doing the microwave dyeing workshop. I'm, um, one of the ladies who's doing a workshop has just had some good but untimely news, so we're having to move around, move the workshops around. And another lady who's doing the workshop um, hasn't been in touch with me um, it's now two weeks and I'm thinking mm, if she's not going to do the workshop I'm going to have to find somebody I've got less than two weeks now to find somebody to replace her so it's a little bit stressful to be honest um, but um, yeah so where are we today it's two weeks it's Monday it's Wednesday two weeks today will be in the midst of the retreat and it finishes two weeks tomorrow and then it'll be my 50th birthday on the 16th of November. So we're going away for that weekend. And that's another thing that I'm worried about because we've booked the spa. It's our favourite place to go. And it's just the two of us. We're going to have the weekend there, dinner, bed and breakfast, all day in the spa, dinner, bed and breakfast again, then come home. But um, Annie is increasingly dependent on me at night. And I don't know how that's going to go. Um, my eldest daughter won't be here. So it will just be the middle daughter and the little one. Um, and, you know, they're perfectly capable of looking after themselves. Um, we've got neighbours and various other things. Um, but, um, I don't know. A little concerned about whether that's going to be okay. Whether they're going to need me. Anyway, so there's that. Um, one other nice, pleasant thing is I've had a, a cyst under my arm for a year now. And it's been very, very painful. And the GP has refused to do anything about it, as I said about the NHS, so it's in crisis. So, I um, luckily I had the funds to go and see a private dermatologist who said it's not just a cyst, it is something called hydradenitis. Um, which means that the cyst will not go away, it will probably get worse, and um, I may have other cysts later on as well. Um, so that was pretty bad news. I was really hoping that she was going to be able to give me a price for having an operation to re remove it. And now I know that it's not going to go away. <laughs> it's going to get worse. So um, that was pretty miserable news this week. And the bedroom move. I'm moving Annie from her bedroom upstairs, which she can't sleep in, to a, a room downstairs, which Dave has been using as an office. So I've got half of it done. The upstairs room has been cleared and redecorated a new carpet and Dave's moved into it and it's his office and it's lovely. It's working really, really well for him. Um, and now the second phase, we're trying to get the downstairs room cleared, get all of our stuff out there, bin a load of stuff, recycle a load of stuff, take a load of stuff to the charity shop um, and then clear it out um, to <clears throat> redecorate just a little bit, just a little bit more paint. Um, and then we can move Annie in there properly with all of her stuff. So it's a long process, um, but we're making progress with it definitely. And we went out to choose paint colours yesterday, and uh, were helped by two very nice people at B and Q. Helped to choose paints, but they didn't have the base that we needed. So I'm going to go back in today and see if I can get it, and then maybe we'll get the um, the lovely guys um, who are doing the work. It's a great guy here, Polish guy who lives in the villages out here, and he does all of the sort of decoration, building work, whatever. It's a brilliant, brilliant chap really really worried about how brexit is going to affect people like him but i can't really think about that right now because nobody knows what brexit is going to look like but i'll be absolutely gutted if he has to leave um on many 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 levels um but anyway so he's going to come and finish off that work so i just need to um let him know when okay so there we go um uh that's all I have to say, I think. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, 
I'm sorry I'm not being terribly cheerful today. Uh, a lot going on and it's all um, quite hard really. Um, so the knitting and crochet is so much more important to me than ever because I just I need it it's my escape and that's why I'm doing quite a lot of that so um, as I said before if you've enjoyed the video please say click all the things down there you know all that stuff um, I will probably be more cheerful next time sorry about being miserable okay um, happy crafting and I'll see you in a couple of weeks bye